Over the past few weeks, the U.S. Supreme Court has reshaped the country's legal landscape on abortion, guns, religion, and more. Correspondent John Yang unpacks the historic term that's now come to a close and looks ahead to what could come next. The court rewrote law and redefined rights in ways that will reverberate through American society for many years. And with the cases they've already agreed to hear when the justices come back in the fall, there is likely to be more to come. Marsha Coyle covers the Supreme Court for the National Law Journal. Marsha, the, the, the beginning of this term that just ended, there was a lot of people wondering what this supermajority, if you will, of six conservative justices would do. And at the end of the term, I think we've got the answer. Uh, I think that this is a very conservative, aggressive new court. And we've seen it in a number of opinions uh, this term. I think it was probably clearest in their decision to take on the abortion case and the gun case. In the gun situation, the court had been turning away numerous gun rights petitions, usually with a dissenting opinion written by Justice Thomas uh, saying that the court had made a constitutional orphan of the Second Amendment. But after Justice Barrett came on the bench, uh, the court took the case. And with the abortion case, the court reached out to take this case uh, when they didn't have to. I think this court uh, has a younger majority now. And yes, uh, these new justices, primarily the three appointed by former President Trump, know where they want to go. So uh, I, I think it's an aggressive court. What more can I say? I want to ask you about the area of religion. I mean, it used to be that courts would try to navigate between the uh, uh, the establishment clause on the one hand of the First Amendment saying that, that worried about government speech seeming to endorse religion, and then the free expression, expression clause protecting people's right to free expression of religion in the First Amendment. Where is that that balance now after this this term? I think the court... The Roberts Court has been on a consistent trend in f that elevates the free exercise clause above the establishment clause. Uh, Justice Breyer used to talk about how it's true that those two clauses can sometimes clash. And what you would try to look for is he, he called it the play within the joints to reach some sort of compromise. But uh, I think that play within the joints is has pretty much disappeared uh, in the uh, Warren court, the 60s and 70s. Uh, religious, religion-related decisions were generally uh, protective or in favor of religious minorities. But since the 90s and the Rehnquist and Roberts court, and particularly the Roberts court, the religion decisions have been in favor of majority or mainstream religions. This term also saw something unprecedented, the, the, the leak of a draft opinion in the uh, uh, in the abortion case, is there any sense of what that's done to the relationship among the justices and in, in the way the justices work together? Well, I think uh, we <laughs> we have a little sense of it. Uh, certainly, uh, Justice Thomas uh, made comments about how uh, it has affected uh, the justices' ability to trust each other. The court. Uh, really believes in uh, protecting the privacy of its decision-making process. And to have a major leak like that, an unprecedented leak, makes it seem just like, you know, any other political institution. In the closing uh, weeks of the, of the term, we got some big, uh, big opinions about some contentious issues. And there was some sharp language in some of the opinions. I, I did find somewhat striking that some of the dissenters, uh, in a sense, were calling out uh, the court, the majority, uh, as aggressive. Uh, I think it was uh, Justice Sotomayor who said in one of her dissents, she called them uh, a new and restless court. And those sort of comments are striking to me because they, they go to the legitimacy of the court itself. The court never wants to be seen as changing law uh, because someone new has come on the bench. There's much been said 
about the uh, activities of the wife of one of the justices, Clarence Thomas's wife, Ginny. Uh, do you think that has had an effect or, or an impact on, on the court's uh, image? I think it definitely has the uh, failure, alleged failure of Justice Thomas to recuse from uh, a case involving uh, the January 6th investigating committee's uh, desire to get White House documents. He was the only one who dissented from that case uh, and did not recuse. The fact that his wife was involved in attempts to change the results of the election, all of that, you know, it just paints such a, a portrait for the court that it's, it's hard to shake. Along those same lines, someone who's been very concerned about the reputation of the court is the Chief Justice, John Roberts. I would imagine that this has been a very difficult term for him. Prior to the court getting a six-justice conservative majority, uh, and it was only you know two terms ago, uh, he was very much in control in terms of cases. Uh, he was in the middle and still able to cobble together majorities uh, with the justices to his right and to his left. But now that there are six conservatives on the court, uh, you only need five for a majority opinion. And uh, this, these five don't need Roberts. And so he was in dissent a couple of times with the court's liberal wing. And then also he wrote some concurring opinions as in the abortion case in which uh, he was, in a sense, almost scolding them about how judicial humility, modesty, judicial restraint should lead them to not uh, you know, overturn Roe. They did not accept his view. And um, I don't see that it's going to get any easier for him. Um, his influence certainly has lessened uh, because of the uh, sixth justice conservative majority. We began this discussion by talking about how aggressive this conservative majority is. Talk a little bit about the uh, the cases they've already accepted for argument when they return in the fall. Uh, do you see signs of the aggressiveness there? I believe so. Uh, they have two affirmative action cases. Affirmative action in higher education has been rather settled uh, for, for a while now. Uh, the court took them. And I assume it's because the court wants to say something about affirmative action in higher education. The court also has uh, a couple of redistricting cases, uh, challenges involving uh, race, uh, racial gerrymandering. They also have an election-related case uh, out of North Carolina that uh, could be very important uh, in terms of the next presidential election. And finally, they're revisiting uh, an, an area that uh, they did take up a while ago, but didn't really uh, address the heart of the issue. Well, Colorado has a law in which a web designer is refusing on the basis of a religion uh, to uh, work with a uh, same-sex couple. Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal, thank you very much. My pleasure, John. Happy 4th.